welcome back. And in the previous videos, we have created a 3D electromagnetic break geometry, and we performed a parametric simulation to see the effect of the size of an air gap on the force that's generated by the electromagnetics on a movable brake plate. And in this video, let's see how we can take advantage of symmetry in that model geometry and create a 2D geometry out of the 3D model. And we will perform the same parametric simulation and see how the results compare between the 2D and the 3D. So let's get started. Go ahead, open the EMV model from that last session in the AEDT student version. Rename the design as EMV underscore 3D and let's make a copy of this model. Simply drag and drop the model design onto the project name. That's a quick copy and paste. And then if you look at this model, it is symmetric around the z-axis. So there are holes for the springs and screws, but the total surface area is much larger than the area of the holes. And so the effect of the holes on the overall results is negligible. Go ahead, rotate the design to make sure that we don't include those screw holes in this 2D section. Do a control A and select all and click on rotate in that pop-up window. Select the z-axis and the angle equals 45 degrees and click OK. Right mouse click on the 3D design under the project manager window. Select create 2D design and in that pop-up window leave the coordinate system as global. For the section plane we can select either YZ or ZX. Let's go ahead and select YZ. For 2D geometry modes you have two options. If the model is axis symmetric about some axis then go ahead and select the XY plane. And if the model is rotational axis symmetry, example, it's cylindrical symmetry around the Z axis, then select the axis of Z. And the EMB model is symmetric around Z. Go ahead, select the Z and click OK. Rename the newly created 2D model to EMB underscore 2D. And you'll see not only the 2D section is created, but also the attributes and the design variables that are related to all the objects are also transferred into that 2D design. But we still need to assign the excitations, the boundaries, and set up the analysis. And we can simplify this model even more by taking advantage of the 360 degree symmetry of the model. Select the region, delete it. Control A to select all the objects that are left in the 3D modeler window. Right mouse click, edit, boolean, separate bodies. Now go ahead and select everything that's on the negative X axis and delete it. And what we now have left is a 2D symmetry part of the EM break. And if we sweep this part by 360 degrees, we'll get back that 3D model of the full 3D model EMB. Select the break plate, right mouse click, assign parameter force. And then in that pop-up window, keep the defaults Click OK, select the coil, right mouse click, assign excitation, current. In the pop-up window, again, keep the name as current one. Under the parameter values, write amp, asterisk turns. Any choice of reference direction is OK. Click OK, create the region, select the rectangle under the draw tab, and draw a rectangle as shown. In that pop-up window, change the parameters as shown below, and click OK. Keep that rectangle selected and change the transparency to 0.9 under the properties window. Change the selection mode to edge. You can do this quickly by pressing the E key on the keyboard. Hold the control key and select the three edges as shown. Release the control key, right mouse click, assign boundary, balloon. Click OK. And now the pop-up window, right mouse click on the analysis, add the solution setup on the pop-up window, keep the defaults. Click OK. Right mouse click on Optometrics now. Add a parametric. In that pop-up window, select Add. Now we're going to add the parametric setup for that air gap. As the same as we did in that 3D model simulation. Start at 0.2 millimeters, stop at 1 millimeters, and steps up 0.1 millimeters. Click Add, then OK. Under the options, select Save Fields and Mesh. Now click OK. Go to the Simulation tab and validate the design. No errors on the setup. 
Go ahead, click close, right mouse click on the parametric setup, select analyze, and after the simulation is completed, right mouse click on the results, create magnetostatic report, rectangular plot. On the pop-up window, under the context, go ahead and select parameter, force one, quantity force C, function mag for magnitude, and then click on new report and close. Now let's compare the force data between the 2D and the 3D results. Go to results in the 3D design, right mouse click on the force underscore mag, copy the data, now go to the 2D design. The go to that result, select the plot, right mouse click and paste it. Now you see both graphs, both sets of data, and they are in good agreement. There are minor differences, but that can be attributed mainly to that initial mesh setting. So remember, in the 3D model, we change it to a coarse mesh because in that 3D design, we were using the student version and there are some mesh element limitations. So now let's go ahead and plot the flux density plot and see how they compare. And you can see that the saturation levels at the various locations on the model are also in good agreement. So what we have done just now is we have shown in this video is that if we take advantage of symmetry in the model geometry, and this will help us reduce the number of mesh cells that replicates that model geometry, that also means we reduce the required simulation time and the necessary computer resources. And this is without affecting the overall results. So this completes the four part series of magnetostatic simulation using AEDT student version. Thank you for watching this video. Find more information on ANSYS Electronics Desktop, AEDT for short, or any of the ANSYS simulation tools. Go to ansys.com forward slash courses today.